of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on this Sunday, the second Sunday of Lent. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will point out to you. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an, alt an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he said, I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me, your son, your only son. Then looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in the bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord. I trusted even when I said I am sorely afflicted. Oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There, in their presence, he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzlingly white, whiter than any bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, it's wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came, covering them in shadow. And there came a voice from the cloud, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly, when they looked round, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warnings faithfully, though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean. The Gospel of the Lord. One day, a man was walking through a field, deep in meditation and reflection. He stood in awe before a huge oak tree, reflecting on the tiny acorns lying on the ground. These had fallen off in the wind. He then looked across the fence at a huge field of pumpkins, each one growing on a tiny vine plant. Suddenly, he had a thought. God must have made a mistake, surely. Why should the huge pumpkins be on tiny vines while the tiny acorns grow on the huge oak tree? It doesn't make any sense. Just then, there was a gust of wind, and a tiny acorn fell from the oak tree, and plump, it hit him straight on the head. He smiled a wry smile and said, Maybe God knew what he was doing after all. Yes, God can appear to ask or do the strangest of things. Take the case of Abraham in the first reading today. He was asked to sacrifice his only son, and stress there is on only, on his only son Isaac. Surely in this case, God must have made a mistake. He must have forgotten he just promised Abraham numerous descendants. However, Abraham doesn't question God, but he goes along with him. His steadfast faith in God's promises is rewarded. The angel stays the hand of Abraham as he is about to sacrifice his son, his only son, Isaac. In contrast, however, we heard in the second reading, God does not spare his own son, but he gave him up to benefit us all. Last Sunday, we saw where Jesus himself was put to the test in the wilderness by Satan. What was at the root of these temptations? Believe it or not, I think that the tempter had pinned his hopes on Jesus turning in anger against his father when confronted with the shame of the cross. Yes, Jesus did say in Gethsemane, Father, if it be possible, let this cup, this cup of suffering, pass from me. But to the disappointment of Satan, he concluded, not as I will, though, but as you will. A few years ago, do you remember the ad on British telly about the British gas? When the guy in the ad clicked his fingers, a blue flame, he clicked his fingers like that, and a blue flame appeared at the top of his thumb. 
while he was saying, don't you just love being in control? Well, most of us do. Sometimes we're even tempted to control God and tell him what to do. God sometimes, metaphorically speaking, tug at the rug under our feet in the hope that we entrust ourselves more fully into his hands. That's the whole purpose of it. But for some, it has the opposite effect. When their faith is tested, they turn their backs on God altogether. Back to Abraham again. Well, he made the leap of faith when at God's invitation he was even willing to sacrifice his only son. So also did Moses later on and Elijah later on still in the Old Testament. At God's bidding and against all odds, Moses led his people out of Egypt. Elijah risked his life in clashing with the wicked queen Jezebel when stamping out the worship of Baal, a false god, which she herself had promoted in Israel. So there was a real clash going on here. I think that is why Moses and Elijah are standing shoulder to shoulder with Jesus on Mount Tabor. Tradition has it, like Jesus, they were taken up in glory at the end of their lives, a fitting reward for their unswerving fidelity. Now, we imitate these three great worthies of the Old Testament, Abraham, the man of faith, Moses, and Elijah, when we willingly allow God, despite the difficulties, to mold and fashion our lives into the image of Jesus, his son. In this way, transfiguration awaits us as well. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal Mysteries through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before you, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the